Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to install the Nexus Forever Wildstar Server Emulator. I'll basically be guiding you through the installation sheet here. First thing you'll want to do is navigate to the Visual Studio website, which I'll link in the description. You'll want to download the free community edition of Visual Studio 2017. After you've downloaded Visual Studio 2017, you'll want to download MySQL. At the bottom of this page you can find the downloads. After you've downloaded and opened MySQL, which will take some time to download, you'll see a screen like this. As you can see, I've already created the default connection, but doing this is fairly simple. You want to start by clicking the little plus next to MySQL connections. In the menu that it opens, you'll want to type in Nexus Forever into the connection name. This should be all lowercase in one word. Similarly, for the username, you'll want to replace root with Nexus Forever and the password should be also set to Nexus Forever. You can set the password by clicking the Store in Vault button. If you need to reset the password, you can click the Clear button. The host name and port options shouldn't be changed. They'll work fine as is. After you've done that, you'll see your creation pop up right here, or right here in your case. This example is one I created to show you how to set it up. To open it, simply click on it. It'll open a new tab up here and look a little something like this. I'll just start off by clicking the button here that says Start Up or Shut Down. If the server instance says it's stopped, you'll go ahead and click Start. If it errors when you try to start, you may need to open up your services, like this. If this happens, search for MySQL and ensure both of the services are running. In my case, it errored for a different reason, but sometimes that can be a culprit. After you've done that, I'm going to move over to my actual copy here. You'll go down to the Schemas option here. Under this menu, you want to right-click and click Create Schema. Here you can type in the name. After you're done, go down here and press Apply. The three schemas you need to create are Nexus Forever Auth, Nexus Forever Character, and Nexus Forever World, as listed here. After you've done that, it's time to download. On the main page of Nexus Forever, you want to click Clone or Download, and you want to click Download Zip. This will take everything in this repository and make it a file for you. After that, you'll want to open that. Go into Database and click Base you'll see three SQL scripts here. You want to load these into MySQL. Generally, you can drag and drop these onto this menu in the center here where it says Query 1. This should load up the script. For each script, you'll want to double-click on the respective schema. For instance, if I load auth.sql, I want to double-click on Nexus Forever Auth and paste the code here. It should automatically be put here when you drag the file onto the window. After that, you'll want to click this lightning bolt up here, which executes the code. This should automatically create all of the account and server information required to set up the server. After this, you'll want to do the same for Nexus Forever Character and Nexus Forever World, similarly Character and World SQL scripts listed here. After that, you'll want to double check this updates folder. At the moment, only Character has updates. What you'll do here is you'll double click on character again, and for each of these scripts inside, you'll drag and drop the file onto this and run it with the lightning bolt just as you did before. These are updates to these existing schemas that add more functionality. These will be changed in the future. You can validate that you packed these correctly by looking under these tables entry in each schema. You can see account and server under auth. In character, you can see character, character appearance, character bone, character customization item, and in world, you can see entity, entity vendor, entity vendor category, and entity vendor item. These three schemas down here can be ignored. They're not necessary, but they're there anyway. It's something SQL puts in. After you've done this, it's time to load up Visual Studio 2017. As you can see here, I've moved Nexus Forever Master into its own folder. You want to start off by opening the source folder. If you've installed Visual Studio 2017 properly, this solution file should be visible as a Visual Studio file. You'll want to open this. 
This should open Visual Studio 2017 and show you this code. Luckily for you, you won't have to edit this code. This is already written, just set out, of, set to go out of the box. You can edit some things, as I have done here, but I'll cover this later on. What I've done here is a utility in-game to help movement speed be increased and increase my jump height and stuff, as you can see here. What you want to do is go up here to Build and press Build Solution. You can also press F7. As you can see down here, it says four builds succeeded. What this will do is it will compile these projects into DLL files, which are used by applications. To run these, you need to use .NET, which should be included with Visual Studio. This is not a website. Do keep that in mind. .NET is actually a programming library used by developers. If you go back to the source folder, and for instance, open auth server, and then go to the binaries folder here, which is named bin, and then go to debug net core app 2.1, you should see the files here, at least most of them. One file you'll see is this auth server.example.json. You'll want to copy this and rename it so that the dot example is removed, as seen here. Here's the file it generated for the auth server. In order to run this, we need to use .NET, as mentioned. I created a batch file. You can do this by going New Text Document and naming it run.bat. If you don't have file extensions on, you may need to open the Properties menu and change it here. After you've created the file, you want to edit it with Notepad. You can do this by clicking the Edit button. I use Notepad++, but you don't need this. As you can see, the code here is fairly simple. It's two lines. I'll have all this code in the description of the video for you to copy, but it's pretty simple. As you can see, I set some values here, and then I use .NET with the name of this DLL file after it. And what this will do is it will run that file. This can't be done for every file, but we need to do it for this one, and it will work because we designed it to do, that, do it that way in the code. You'll want to do this for all four, except for shared. Shared should not have its own thing. Hence its name. It's code that's shared between all, all of the other projects here. You'll want to do this for auth server, STS server, and world server. Likewise, in STS server and world server, you'll find the JSON files. You'll want to do the same thing where you remove .example and create a run file. Do keep in mind that the name needs to be accurate to this DLL. After you've done that, it should be set to go for the most part. What I did was I created a shortcut folder, or uh, excuse me, that's the wrong folder. I created a program folder here where I made shortcuts to each of those batch files. One major thing you need to do here involves using Wildstar Studio but I've decided to help you out with that, and I've included the decompiled files as part of the video description. You'll find a link there. If I go into World Server, you'll see this folder here named Table, or TBL. Inside of here, it includes all of the game data. To install this, it's fairly simple. You'll need to go to World Server, bin, debug, net core app 2.1, and then drag and drop the table file into here, or the table folder, excuse me. After you've done that, you should be able to run these programs. All three of these programs need to be running at the same time in order for it to work. If it launches successfully like this, no errors, where each console says ready, this one may take a little longer, then you've done it properly. You'll need to start off by creating yourself an account. You can do this by typing into the World Server console, account create, the name of your account, and then the password to your account. I recommend using some placeholder text like I have here, because it's not a real account, and this account only exists on your computer. No one else can use it. After you've done this, there is some code that you need to write 
for this program here called Wildstar Mod Launcher. This is very simple to create, and I've included the code in the description. Here's the source code for that Wildstar Mod Launcher. Again, this will be in the description of the video. To do this, you want to first go up to File, Close, if you're currently in uh, Nexus Forever still. Actually, uh, File, Close, Solution. This should clear your window out. I might add that this menu right here will probably be on the right side for you. It will look the same either way, it's just on the opposite side for me. After you do this, you want to go to File, New, Project, in other languages or wherever it may be, select Visual C Sharp and click Console App with .NET Framework. You'll want to name this something like Run WS. I've already created this, but when you create this, it should create a blank solution for you. Hold on, let's run. Let me open that up again. It should create an empty solution here for you with bare minimum code. It should look something like this with these files inside. It should also have program.cs open by default. It won't look like this for you because I've loaded in the code, which again will be in the video description. Loading this code will be quite easy as you'll, as you'll erase everything in the file and then just paste the code. It'll work fine after that. One major thing you need to do is down here on line 62, it says WS location, and then it has the link to a file here. This file needs to be changed based on where your game is located. You can usually find this through Steam by clicking uh, properties on the game and clicking browse local files. As you can see, you'll want to include the client64, wildstar64.exe file. This should be fairly simple. After you do this, you should be able to start it from Visual Studio, or if you hit F7, as you did previously for Nexus Forever, it'll create an exe for you, which you can double-click on and run like any other program. If you specified your file location properly, which I'll break mine here on purpose, to show you what happens. If you don't specify your file properly, the console will beep at you and say failure. And it will likely say error code 3, which means the system cannot find the file, which means you specified the wrong path. If there's another kind of error, it'll only show the code, as I don't know what the other codes are. But you can Google it to find out, as it mentions here. It'll also show this in the console if something else goes wrong, so you can see it there. However, if I type my file path correctly and start the console, it'll only show up for a split second, but then it'll quit instantly. After that, it should open up Wildstar. As you can see in the top right here, it points to... Oh, it disappeared when NVIDIA came up. Let me swap over here and see if I can get this working. Here we go. So in the top here, I don't know if you can see that very well, it says localhost instead of the auth.ncsoft servers. If it looks a bit like this, you've done it correctly, and you should be able to log into your own account that you've created for yourself. Do mind that in, or in order for it to work, you'll have to open up the three servers through the run files that you created. When it all pieces together, it should look a little something like this. The three consoles will load up. It will load the game tables and start the world server. I've already created my account, so I don't need to run account create. After that, I can use Wildstar Mod Launcher. And I can log into my own account. Let me swap over scenes here. As you can see, you have full control over the server. This includes the ability to make something ridiculous like a level 69 engineer. 
<laughs> spawn points don't save at the moment. You'll always spawn in at the same exact location every time you log in. You usually won't have any weapons, and most of the UI will be missing, but that's all soon to come. As you can see, my little character edits have been doing me well. I'm moving incredibly quickly, and I jump incredibly high. Here, you don't have to worry about enemies or damage. It's impossible to die in this version. This means you're free to explore the world as you please. Unfortunately, certain entities, such as Elden Teleporters, will not function. This has to be added in manually, and we haven't done that yet. However, luckily, if you have a thirst for exploration, forbidden zones no longer exist and you're free to go wherever you want without any limitations at all. This includes leaving the map. As a bonus, I have a text file that I created based on the table files. Inside of this file is a list of coordinates of every single location on the world. Have a look. You can find everything here. Let's say I want to go see the protoplasmic resonator. Let's go. To do this, you'll open up the chat and say exclamation point teleport, and then you'll paste in three, the four coordinates. The first number should be the world ID, and the following three numbers should be X, Y, and Z. After you run that, the server will transport you. You can go anywhere in the game you want with this. There are no limits at all. Oops, wrong lab. Oh well. <laughs> I think I'm a little too far out. Yeah, I'm a little too far out. But you have full power to go anywhere in the game with this, as I mentioned. So you can go visit anywhere you want. Oops, let's try something else. Here we are. Isn't that amazing? You can even jump off and face no consequences. Do mind that it may be difficult to get back up. In some worlds, you might be able to fall so far that you... Oh look, there's test assets down here. <laughs> In some worlds, you may be able to fall out of bounds of the map. If this happens, you'll have to quit the game and log back in. Additionally, there's some very interesting stuff here, including, if you've read the recent lore, something that may stick out to you. Let's, let's have a look at this. What you can see here is the Halon Ring. This area was mentioned in lore and does exist. However, for the sake of your discovery, I'll let you see that on your own. This text document of every location in the game will be included. For now, that's all there is to it. If you have any issues, be sure to leave a comment. I'll try to address it as quickly as I can.